All right, in this lesson, we are going to be looking at combining percents. And there are a number of word problems that we're going to be looking at, a number of problem solving, uh, different problems to look at. And there are a variety of ways of solving these, but there's only one correct answer. So if you have a different way to solving these problems, it's absolutely 100% fine. Uh, so this first problem says a $15 CD has 5% GST and 7% PST. Calculate the total tax and the total cost. So First of all, to calculate the total tax, we are allowed to, in this scenario, we're allowed to combine the 5% and 7% tax, and that equals 12% tax, okay? The reason we're allowed to combine the taxes here is because they occur at the same time. Uh, if you go to the till when you're buying anything, they combine the tax um, at the till at the same time. But this question is asking, what's the tax in dollars? So our tax in dollars, we actually want to calculate what is 12% of the $15 CD, because that's what the tax is. And percent of a number, we learned how to do it on our calculator in two steps. The first thing you do is convert the percent to a decimal. So 12% is 0 0.12 as a decimal. And to figure out 12% of $15, we're going to multiply that by what we're finding the percent of. So 0 0.12 of $15 is going to tell us that the tax, and this makes sense, is $1.8, or $1.80. Uh, the nice thing about tax type problems, and a number of these problems, is you know if your answer is realistic or not realistic. Okay, So the total tax is $1.80. The next question, and you might want to pause this as you're writing things down, or you're uh, thinking about them, or thinking around them. Um, or you might want to work ahead on some of these problems, is the total cost. So the total cost of this CD is going to be the $15 CD plus the $1.80 tax. So the total cost of this CD is going to be $16.80, which again makes sense. $15 CD plus 12% tax is $16.80. So the big takeaway from this particular question is the following. If percents are being applied to a number at the same time, like this question here, so if they're being applied to something at the same time, like tax, the percents can be combined. Okay? So if, some, if percents are being applied at the same time, the percents can be combined. Let's look at this next question. In 2011, the Langley population is 150,000 people. In 2012, that increased by 10%. And then in 2013, it increased by 5%. How many people are at the end of 2013? So you might want to write down this problem before we start thinking about it. So the first thing here is to understand that you are not allowed to combine the 10 and 5% 5, 10 and 5 to be a 15% increase because the second increase will be on a different and new 2012 population. So I'll write that here, is that those cannot be combined. And the reason behind that is because they are at different times and being applied at different numbers, OK? So let's look at this. Uh, one way to think about this problem is to actually approach it in what I would call steps. And I'm actually going to draw, draw the steps out. So in 2011, <clears throat> we had a population. So let me just write here. We've got 2011. Our population is 150,000 people. Now what we need is in 2012, that population to increase by 10%. So it's going to be a 10% increase. Okay. So the first thing we need to do in order to calculate the new population in 2012, again, you might want to write this down, is to find out what I have, and I'm going to add in red, is what's 10% of 150,000 people. And that's going to be 10% as a decimal is 0.10. So of 150,000 people is a total of, this makes sense, 10% is 1 tenth of it. So if you do this a different way, it's absolutely fine. <clears throat> but it's going to be a 15,000 person increase. Okay? So the population in 2012 is not 15,000. That's the increase. The population in 2012 is going to be, what I'm going to add in blue here, is the initial, whoops, the initial 150,000 plus the 15,000. 
So that's equal to 165,000 people. And that's in 2012. Sorry, this is a little bit messy here at the moment and boggled up. But the population in 2012 is 165,000. Now the next part of the question says in 2013, it went up and increased by 5%. So we have to have a 5% increase. And that 5% increase is being applied to the 165,000 people. So we need to find out 5% of 165,000. Okay, so 5% as a decimal is 0 0.05 if you times divide it by 100, and 5% of 165,000 people is equivalent to 8,250 people. That's the increase. So, in essence, your final population, and this is 2013 here that I'm drawing the line on, so it's 2013, your final population is 165,000 people plus the increase. So 165,000 plus the 8,250 person increase in 2013. So that total is going to be 173,250 people. That's the answer to this question. <clears throat> okay, that's the number of people at the end of 2013. So that was a lot of work, and there's a lot of different ways to think around these problems. But the big idea here, and this is in the key idea that you're going to write down now, is the following. If percents are being applied at different times, like a population increase on a population increase, or another one you're going to see and you saw in your study guide was a discount on a discount. The percents cannot be combined because the percents are being applied to different values at different times. So they cannot be combined. You have to treat this more in steps. So in this case, drawing a step or a stair for each step is helpful, like I've done here, an increase on an increase. <coughs> 